tissues, um, which may be giving us hints towards a bit of dysbiosis. It can at be. the moment. Um, but the other, I guess the other thing as you know, the other way is that some. Hi everybody and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am naturopath Fiona Chin, co-creator of Kygenesis and co-author of the Kidney Disease Solution. And I am joined today by Emily Carhill um, and I'll let Emily dive in and talk about all things TMAO, what it is, what it looks like and how would you know if that was a problem that you had? So why don't you first tell us what it actually is, Emily, because most people are never yes. going to heard of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so TMAO stands for trimethylamine N-oxide. Um, what it is, it's a metabolite that's produced by our gut bacteria from um, certain uh, certain foods. So it's particularly, so it's from foods that contain choline um, and carnitine largely. And so those are largely, <coughs> excuse me, animal meat, dairy um, and eggs. So it's animal products really. Mm -hmm. And when we eat these foods, um, our gut bacteria breaks them down and works on them. And they, it releases something called TMA, so trimethylamine. TMA then gets transported to the liver. Mm -hmm. And in the liver, it becomes oxidized into TMAO. And it's a certain enzyme in the liver um, FMO3, which does that conversion from TMA to TMAO. And then TMAO is excreted in urine um, from the body. But the problem is that when we have elevated levels of TMAO, it's been linked to a number of different diseases. So particularly cardiovascular disease, that's probably one of the primary uh, links where, that people are aware of. So um, blood, blood clots, hardening of the arteries, heart attacks, stroke, heart failure. It's been linked to diabetes. It's been linked to bowel cancer. Um, it's been linked to kidney disease, which is obviously why we're talking about it. Um, liver problems, so non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or liver damage, um, neurodegenerative diseases, um, and inflammation. So just generalized inflammation in the body as well. Yeah. And so it really is something if you've got someone that's just eating, you know, lots of meat or uh, not even that, I guess that's that's a bit unfair, but because there has to be some down regulation of other pathways for really this to kick up. But you really be finding people are eating a high protein sort of diet, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So um, high protein diet and because that, I guess, affects it in two ways. One is that it's giving the substrate that we need to create the TMA to then be converted into TMAO, but also because what we eat affects the bacteria um, in our gut and the levels of bacteria in our gut, that there are certain bacteria that are able to um, create this TMA. So it also depends on um, the balance of bacteria in your gut, um, but those bacteria are upregulated in people who eat a lot of protein. So it kind of, I guess, goes hand in hand. And are there are other factors that are linked to it because I know from memory, like if people have had gastric bypass surgery, I think they have an increased risk of TMAO, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So other things like, yeah, gastric bypass surgery, having a high fat diet as well. So not just thinking about the protein, but high fat diet too. Um, sleep deprivation, they've found um, people have high levels of TMAO levels, type yeah. TMAO, um, and certain pollutants as well. Um, which is likely to do with the particularly the action on the liver and increased conversion of TMA into TMAO by that enzyme that does that that converting. And so, what do you? How would you know? Like, because no one's ever heard of this. It's not a question we get asked a lot of, but it's just something to be aware mm -hmm. of. How would you know that you had high TMAO level TMAO levels? How, what would be the symptoms? Um, so. In terms of symptoms, I don't think there'd be anything specific. Um, it would more be, you know, something to think about in people who have cut cardiovascular problems, um, kidney disease, inflammation, um, who have a restricted diet potentially, um, who potentially have some digestive issues, um, which may be giving us hints towards a bit of dysbiosis. It can be tested on a blood test. I was about um, to ask. That. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it tested once. Um, so it's definitely not something that's done commonly. I think it will become something that be starts to become more common. Um, but at the moment, like obviously initially in research, but yeah, it can be tested on a blood test. Um, 
it is something that you obviously I don't know a lot of if a lot of doctors would um, be happy or willing to test it because it's not you know super well known at the moment um, but the other I guess the other thing as you know the other way is that some stool tests will give us an idea of depending on the bacteria in the gut are you more likely to have elevated levels um, of TMAO looking at your gut bacteria so that could be another way to potentially look at it if you can't get it tested on a blood test. And what specific bacteria would you be looking at for elevated TMO? So generally it's a higher amount of Firmicutes bacteria. Um, uh, I think it's been also linked to things like Clostridia, E. coli, um, and a lot of those protein degrading type bacteria as well. Because the interesting thing that they found in people who were vegetarian or vegan is that even when they gave them animal meats and um, foods high in carnitine or choline, they still had negligible TMA O levels because of the bacteria in their gut. So even when they were eating um, those foods that typically would increase TMA O for them, it didn't because of their gut. So I guess that gives us a big clue that working on the gut is a, you know, a big part of it. Yeah, and it goes to that why we put people on vegetarian diets with um, and why maybe going vegetarian because we know the gut microbiome changes within, I think it's like two weeks of just a dietary change. You start mm. to get, you see that have an influence and change what the microbiome looks like. So, you know, that's maybe one of the reasons that people may not know that they have elevated TMAO, but once yeah. we change their diets, once they're following the kidney disease solution program and following that diet, people start to feel better. And maybe part of it is because they're getting a reduction in that which is fascinating. So um, if you've liked this video, make sure you hit a like. And if you hit subscribe, it means that you'll get notified anytime we create more content. If there are any things that you, um, any specific topics that you want us to uh, create videos on, make sure you comment in the comments below. I do check those every day and we'll try and get back to you. Um, and then if you want to know more about what we do, head over to www.kidneycoach.com and there you'll find a link uh, to our supplements that we sell that were developed specifically to cover stage one of the kidney disease solution. And if you want to know more about that, that's all on there as well. If you uh, have questions and you're following the program, you can hit us up at support at kidneycoach.com and one of our qualified naturopaths, Emily being one of them and Rach being the other, we'll get back to you. And um, yeah, and Emily, again, thank you for sharing your wonderful wealth of knowledge with the all crazy things TMAO. And thanks everyone for being part of our community and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.